Good evening. Aapko namaste. Aapko namaste, guys. Aapko namaste. Namaste. Ready for the next class? <laughs> the study session. I hope you're prepared. Uh, and also wanted to uh, find out from you whether you're okay with the pace that we're going in, where we read the book and uh, we give our input from Master Chaur's book, and Amit also gives his input. Uh, would that be okay with you? Or or do you find that it's too much hello. and you want to stick to only the book ah hello pa sairam how are you welcome chat please yeah fine <laughs> okay she's uh... Uh, um because actually um if you look at the even the next two chapters like for the heart when we were talking uh i think i spoke a little bit uh excessively because this is just with regards to the etheric double so we're wondering whether we want to go into the you whole yes. uh, uh, emotional and uh, mental and uh, I haven't muted you so you can unmute yourself and and even talk aspect. not a problem uh, because if you look at the next uh, chapters yes yeah. rada yeah yeah so it's perfectly fine to have uh, references from mcks i think uh, amit is doing a great job because you're trying yes. to explain from book and he's explaining from the mcks yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we so. little bits uh, yeah, actually, actually we are getting the benefit of both worlds so good we want it that way yeah okay all right thank so you me, what i what i love is the little tips that amit gives yeah. uh, link i mean those are invaluable thank you so much amit no worries yeah. i mean just wanted feedback because we're yeah. just wondering whether um you know um because if you just see the next two chapters even the heart cha heart, heart chakra it was i mean just one page and if you look at the throat throat is like nothing and and uh, the eyebrow is also a page eyebrow yeah the center between the eyebrows okay fine <laughs> <laughs> i don't think <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, Shailaja, you wanted to say anything? No, I just said it's fantastic. Please carry on because we get the benefit of all the worlds. All right, thank you. And Monica. So. Gitanjali. So yeah. So uh, the pace is really good right now, and all the extra information is most welcome, especially <laughs> from a healing point of view application, even otherwise. Thanks a lot. Thank it, you. It, it has to be for me. It has to be sometimes linked into a practical aspect. Otherwise, yeah. a certain amount of information is good for you know for our knowledge. But uh, how do we apply this, and uh, how do we take it forward from there? Yes, uh, yes. And you know, so correct. That's why we, yeah, this is something you won't get in other books. So it's very precious. So please keep it going. And uh, well, some I have of this stuff we're not going to. Uh, pulls us back into the class because sometimes it you know sometimes we just don't get it so this links it and keeps us in the class <laughs> because okay fine um, done definitely some of the stuff you're not going to be able to read in books uh, as far as i know i've not read it in books it's what we learned so uh, from the teacher and sure through some experience uh, vijay kumar and uh, radhika nothing it's totally fine uh, it's going good Okay, fine. And uh, Shona? Yeah. So, especially I have read this book, tried to read it two, three times before, but <laughs> okay. I found it uh, so boring and bad. But <laughs> it's it's like in nature. That's why. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I will give a fantastic clarity. I never thought that I will understand this book so well. Okay. Thank you very much. You know, uh, can I add something, Sumi? If you yeah, allow me. Sure. sure, sure, Doctor Sagar. Yeah. You know, so the way you read the book and you actually pause after every sentence, the long sentences, long paragraphs, you are in a way telling us how to read the other theosophy books. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's uh, my way of reading the other books has changed when I see you explaining the book. And thank you, Amit. Whatever you say, I keep on writing it a thick double. So both of you are doing a, a thanks for generating our interest in theosophy. No worries. No, worries. no problem. Thank you so, so much. Kind of doubling you are generating together. What is it? Another one is it like pouring more on into it? Yeah, so really, really thank you. Thank you so much. So with that, let's start off with our invocation <laughs> before we go to the eyebrows. No, we're going to the throat. We're going to the throat. Okay. <laughs> Just checking out maybe eyebrows. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's close our eyes. Connect onto our palate. Inhale and exhale. Relax. 
let's find out why we are all here. Let's be aware of our focus for now. And so let's invoke to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chua Koksui, to Lord Maha Guruji Mailing, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, especially to the great beings, teachers, and masters of theosophy, the great beings of knowledge, light, and power, we humbly ask for your great, great blessings today. To all the great beings of communication, our respective Wi-Fi, to our soul and divine self, help us as we sit together to have a greater and deeper and clearer understanding of these priceless teachings. Help us also to absorb and assimilate this knowledge, to then use it to become better divine instruments to do your work, to become effective instruments to heal, to help others, and to make this world a better place. We humbly offer ourselves as instruments in your service. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you with gratitude, respect, and love. Thank you. Okay, okay so let's move on. Chapter 8. Yes? Okay, so um, I'll first mute. I'll finish that. Or will you do it? Okay. So um, the throat center, yes. Now the throat is in this context, the fifth, and uh, it has 16 spots, yes, which means that's how the, the chakra is divided uh, by those, by that uh, spoke or that imaginary kind of division. And it, uh, the color that is usually associated with this, uh, they basically mention is the blue color. Yeah, so we're gonna to come to that in a bit. Now, interestingly, they say that uh, besides the blue, if you look at the, the shade that they're talking about, they say that it, it shines, it shimmers like the moon on, on a full moon over the sea. Now, um, whether it actually shimmers for all of us, I have no idea. But when I look at Master Cho's book and he talks about the color in the throat, uh, which is blue, and he also mentions green. Interestingly, uh, the, the two colors will come to a little later. Uh, but I remember one of the things, uh, how I remembered is uh, Lord Shiva is called Neelkar, right? And that is with reference to the blue. And so when I learned uh, in the initial days, I remember they mentioned this to me and I thought that was quite interesting. And so I always remembered blue for the throat. I never lost that. Anyway, coming back to this. So uh, it has 16 spokes and the color that they talk about is only blue. However, in Master Chua's, uh book, he does mention green and blue. Right now, the number of petals is the same, so there's no uh, uh, quarrel about that. And it says that the color that it receives, remember again from the spleen chakra that we were referred to earlier. Here, the color that they refer to is violet blue rays that comes from the spleen, and this rays appears, yes, as it divides, it continues to move through the entire throat. So, all the organs that come here, your lymphatic system, your uh, thyroid, your parathyroid, yes, uh, your voice box, uh, your food tube, your windpipe, all of it gets this energy. And uh, the dark blue, interestingly, and the violet that they say that's also there in this throat chakra heads towards the brain, right? And uh, the violet that goes from the brain goes towards the crown chakra. Now, interestingly, remember in the when we we're talking about the heart, uh, we spoke about the 12 petals of the heart and then we even referred to at, at one point in the book about the 12 inner petals of the crown. Now, that the yellow goes there, correct, if you remember, but the violet that we're talking about here goes to the 960 petals on the surrounding. Yes, surrounding the 12 inner petals, there are 960 petals. And so the violet tends to go towards this area. And so when I first read this book uh, way back in the 90s, I remember the, uh, the one thing that I realized, oh wow, this also mentions 960 and 12. And so for me, it was a direct correlation between the book and Master Chua, because before that, I've never heard of it. I've only heard of this word called Sahasra Chakra, which is a thousand. So this is the closest that I've, I've seen the exact numbers that Master refers to in his uh, books, yeah? Uh, so moving on to the third paragraph. The light blue gives health to the region in the throat, to all the parts that we mentioned. It gives it strength and elasticity of the vocal cords. Remember the pliability in the blue prana that we talk about, yes? And so the elasticity, because the vocal cords, especially for singers, speakers, has to expand, has to function well, else the voice, the tone does not come out the way you want it to. And so the blue is required for that. 
And so it goes on to say, um, this, this particular um, center is also, if you can remember from what Master Cho talks about, is the concrete mind. And so for me, the special brilliance and the ray of this uh, particular um, chakra is associated with what you and I refer to as concrete mind. Oh, you just joined oh, today. Okay, someone's joined today. I would highly recommend you uh, catch up with the... Uh, Vijay, uh, could you also give him the, uh, you know, if he can go and get the soft copy online, it might help him to continue from the throat chakra. Yeah, also the link to the videos, the recordings earlier. Correct. Yeah, and so uh, the dark blue... Ex expands itself in the lower central part of the brain. Yes. So the blue continues to remain according to them in the lower part of the brain. However, the violet floods the upper part and appears to give special vigor to the chakram at the top of the head, which is the crown chakra, which is the important one that they call after. <clears throat> Diffusing itself chiefly through the 960 petals, yes, of the outer part of the center. So they're talking about that particular uh, color, which we referred to. So ordinary, ordinary thought is stimulated by blue ray. Yes, mingled with part of the yellow from the heart. So the blue, which they're talking about, the ordinary thought that is stimulated. And for me, that is basically your concrete mind. So when you talk to little kids and you want to teach them uh, what is a circle, right? What is a square? Uh, what is a rectangle? You have to show them objects. It has to be concrete for them. Something that they can see, something that they can touch, something that maybe even they can draw. And so that is got to do with the throat chakra. Yes. And so ordinary. Yes. So for practically every person on earth, they should have uh, effective throat chakra or a, if uh, the, the functioning of the throat chakra should be at least more than uh, average. Yes. It should be effective enough for them to understand. And so for them to generate these thoughts, these very simple thoughts, requires this. Now, when you go to the next one, which is uh, between the eyebrows, right? It, it, that's a completely different uh, mind that we're talking about. So the work of the throat chakra in connection to the astral body and the mental body is just ordinary thought. Yep. And uh, so coming back to what I wanted to add. So we'll just show you the image uh, how much shall I show them the image? Mm. Yeah, so I'm going to go, sorry, I'm just going to go to the image. No, you have to do some. All right, so if you look at the diagram, this is the one that you have in the book. And so you see the circle you, and you can see the division, the 16 spokes. You can see, as we've seen with all other chakras, the primary force yeah, coming from the astral. And then you can see down below the right lowest part, the color coming from the spleen. Yes, the dark blue and the violet. And then in the throat stays the blue. Yes, but the dark blue continues to go further. Yes, which you can see on the right top. Dark blue uh, giving power to thought mingled with yellow. Yes, uh, which is at the lower part of the brain, lower and central part of the brain. However, violet, it says, uh, gives you what is called spiritual thought. So we're talking about, um, when we talk about thoughts that go beyond from the heart, when it goes more, more towards thoughts to help humanity, uh, help the human race, those kind of thoughts, which are much, much bigger on a higher scale, is then developed from the crown. And so that is called the spiritual thought. We'll come to um, the Agni Chakra later. And then ultimately reaching the crown chakra and the violet basically surrounding and moving into the 960 petals that we have on our crown. So that's basically what I wanted to say. I'll hand it over to Amit. Go ahead. Uh, if I start talking about this one, we'll end the whole <laughs> session. Uh, they've not spoken much, but uh, let's see what... Uh, Okay, looking at this diagram, let's start with this one. Okay, 16 petals, okay, we know that already, all right? Yeah. Um, now, some of these uh, diagrams, you know, is, um, is a little bit conflicting, all right? For example, um, the, up, uh, okay, you can't watch me point. Okay. Upper left. Yeah, 
So the bottom part, let's start from the bottom, okay? So from spleen center, dark blue, violet. You have to understand that energy is always moving in the body, so I don't know what dark blue and violet is doing there. Uh, but what I do know is that there is a very important connection from the throat to the spleen chakra, okay? And the purpose of that is to control the physical spleen for immune system. So the throat and the, so actually the physical spleen is not only controlled by the spleen chakra front and back, it is controlled by the spleen chakra front and back and the throat chakra. Now, if the throat needs to control this physical spleen uh, through the spleen chakras, it needs a connection, obviously. Okay, and that is probably the connection. <clears throat> but I doubt uh, that all the energy is coming from there. Of course, energy will be coming, vitality will be coming from the spleen, all right, uh, from there. But that's another reason of the existence of the meridian because the way it's showing, uh, the existence that is showing is only for the purpose of supplying it with prana. Okay, you have to understand there are different levels and facets. So that is what I feel. Can I add one thing? Which is yeah. Quick, so if you look at, <laughs> sorry, my stuff. sorry, <laughs> lymphatic system, I still remember there are what uh, I call the three sisters. Oh. <laughs> I say it, she remembers it. <laughs> anyway, so now this part, let's go up. Okay, we'll go anti-clockwise. So we're going to the lower and central brain, dark blue, giving power of thought, mingled with yellow. From the heart. Now, I don't know about giving power of thought. Um, we'll look at that. But the throat controls um, the jaw minors, jaw minor chakras, which are not revealed here because they can be dangerous if misused. Uh, the jaw minor chakra predominantly has the energy which goes, which controls the energy going through the carotid arteries to the lower and especially to the central brain. For those of you who are, who are healers and you've done, or pranic healers and you've done uh, healing for stroke patients, you know the importance of that, or you remember your advanced pranic healing class. With the jaw minor chakras, the healthiness of the jaw minor chakra is directly proportional to the healthiness of the throat. So if the throat is dirty, the jaw minor starts to get dirty. All right. Um, now, so that is from there. And then if you go left again, uh, to the upper part of the brain, outer part of the top of the head center. So it's saying that it's going to the uh, uh, top part of the sound head center. And then uh, what it says is, it says um, it floods the upper part, just like Sumi said, um, and appears to give special vigor to the chakram at the top of the head, diffusing itself chiefly through the outer part of the 960 petals, okay, uh, of the center. I don't think this is correct for two reasons, all right? Because you have to understand clairvoyance is very tricky. But of course, we're looking at one of the top clairvoyants uh, in, his in his time but the blessings of the teacher is much more important than uh, clairvoyance. Uh, that's what Master Chua said, I think in the Spiritual Substance of Man book uh, about Charles Ledbetter uh, or Bishop Ledbetter. Number one, you have to understand that the crown absorbs its own violet prana. I mean, produces its own violet prana. It's one of the major entry points of energy Air prana plus divine energy, all right? We learn that in the next chapter. They won't tell you, but I'll tell you, <laughs> okay? <laughs> all right, so now you've learned many sources. You have the lungs and the heart chakra, you have the spleen, you have the basic and the souls, and now you have the crown. And from there, it comes down because the body has to be supplied with this violet, with this type of prana that the crown is absorbing. So that meridian actually comes here. Sometimes people get uh, confused which way it's going. Okay, it's predominantly moving this way, all right? Uh, the arrow, I don't think so. Why? Number two, if, if there was a very direct connection to the brain, all right, um, it says to the brain. It's not really to the brain, it's straight to the, I think, to the chakra. Why? Because we use a lot of orange on the throat. Master used to use it. I've seen him use it. He's asked us to use it several times. And if there was a correction, connection from the throat uh, directly to the brain, we would not be able to use orange uh, on the throat chakra. We would only be able to clean it with green and violet. For those of you who are doing normal advanced running healing, uh, just stick to green and violet. Do not try and use orange because the shade of orange uh, is a little bit tricky. 
Um, but if you've done CPH, by then your shade should be okay. So you can start using orange on the throat. It's really required for sore throat and certain types of uh, ailments related to the throat because it has an expelling effect, okay? Um, but master would not uh, would tell us to be very careful in uh, in um, in um, using uh, jaw minor uh, using orange on the jaw minor. Sorry. In fact, he would tell us not to use orange on the jaw minor. All right, because uh, that is dangerous because the orange can go directly into the brain. So there, there's a direct connection. Uh, here, it's an indirect connection. So what happens is you have to remember the throat has a consciousness of its own. It'll adjust. It'll adjust the energy and it'll. Um, manage it, the, uh, the amount of energy going to the brain. Just like when you put orange into the lungs and then it goes to the heart. The body has a consciousness of its own, okay? All right, now, then the, the last thing, violet, giving spiritual thought and spiritual emotion. What is spiritual emotion? <laughs> spiritual thought, okay. Spiritual emotion is what? Spiritual feelings? No. I feel so spiritual right now. Oh my now. God, no. It's, it's love on a higher degree. Divine love? So the throat gives divine love to the crown? It enhances it probably. Mm. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to make sense of what's written there. Mm. Okay. There are many ways to talk about it. When we talk about spiritual emotion, you can talk about, again, the principle of receptivity. This is very interesting. This shows me that maybe the violet is coming from the top and throat is concretizing the violet. Okay? Now, when you give spiritual thought, spiritual emotion, the spiritual emotion um, could be, this is a wild guess based on what I know, uh, it could be a receptivity to spiritual energies. All right? When Master would talk to us about people who are very receptive, all right, um, you see, sometimes pe the, the patients, if you, those of you are healers, they want to be receptive, but they're a little nervous. So they tend to reject the energy. Now, one way to do that, one way to avoid uh, that is by activating the heart. That's what we spoke about in the previous session and even in, the, I think, the first or second chapter. But another way, especially if you're working on an organ, or a specific part that really requires energy, and you want to make sure that almost all of it goes in, is by making, and especially especially if divine energy needs to be used. I'm not talking about uh, etheric energy. Especially if divine energy, like electric violet, those of you know what it is, or brilliant white light needs to be used. You, you, uh, what, what he would teach us is to project violet first, and then the divine energy. Now the question is why? He observed that, Many times when a person is extremely, uh, oh, now, how much should I explain? Okay, I'll cut it short. When a person is not as receptive, all right, the, the, and you project electric violet or divine energy or charismatic healing, any type, the energy comes in and the energy goes out. It's very subtle, so it just passes through because the person is not able to grab it because of lack of conductivity or receptivity, all right? Or impurities. Or, yeah because of that also. Now, what happens when a person is very receptive? What happens when a person is very receptive? When a person is very receptive, a lot of violet is produced by the, by the body for some reason. That's what Master Cho would tell us. He's like, oh, the, the body is turned, a lot of violet is being produced by the aura and by the chakras. And what happens is when you project the divine energy, it goes straight in and it has a bubbling effect and there's, um, the energy is absorbed very, very fast by the etheric body, all right? Even, even, um, even the divine energy is absorbed. So uh, that's how sometimes Master Joe said when a lot of when a group is very receptive, he would see a lot of violet in the audience. All right, and that is the principle behind the sort of meditation they have on violet lake or violet light. So you go into the violet lake, you wash your organs, blah blah blah. That is to create. So so he says, how do we how do we simulate uh, the uh, if the energetic condition of a person who is receptive in a person who is not receptive. And the answer was just project violet before you project electric violet. So what happens is, and that is in the crystal book, the principle behind miraculous healing technique, but all that is not given. The explanation is not given. So you project violet, then you project electric violet. Okay, there's green in the miraculous healing, but the principle of projecting violet before electric violet is so that you simulate 
the chakral condition or energetic and even energetic condition of a person who is extremely extremely receptive okay so the energy is utilized by the body and uh, the person is healed much much faster so that could be spiritual emotion or i'm completely off and i wasted your time for 10 minutes <laughs> or 5 minutes okay so that is there all right what's the next that that could be a different level of truth there are so many interpenetrating levels of truth it's giving me a headache in these two pages okay now the question is this way um okay now this is also wrong uh <laughs> sorry not entirely accurate not wrong sorry not entirely accurate <laughs> it receives the violet blue ray from the spleen because there are certain things out of after decades of experience that you just know you know um anyway it receives the violet blue ray from the spleen chakra uh, not entirely that is true but it also receives a significant amount of energy from the sex chakra all right uh if you read the advanced pranic healing book if you read super brain yoga if you read uh, psychotherapy you read all this you'll notice that this, the the healthiness of the throat is directly proportional to the healthiness of the sex now we're getting a little bit crazy because one is proportional to this this is proportional to that that's proportional to this that's why to master advanced pranic healing requires some time and experience okay um so it receives predominantly from two or three chakras all right the throat one is from the spleen one is from the sex chakra all right because the sex chakra provides it with a different type of energy that the spleen chakra provides it with all right if you could only absorb that type of energy from the air people would be much more happy in life okay <laughs> okay um now this rear then appears to divide the light blue remaining to course through the and vivify the throat center yeah. while the dark blue and dark white pass, passes on to the brain yeah. so it looks like the uh, like the throat is like a train stop to the brain <laughs> okay transit transit airport <laughs> now and that is shown even in i think the second chapter or whatever whenever we were looking at the system now the question is why can't the uh, why can't the energy go directly to the brain that is the question <laughs> this is why in certain cultures the throat is known as the abyss or a bridge okay but i'll not go into detail for that that will require too much time uh the light blue gives health to the region of the throat and the strength and elasticity of the vocal cords of a great singer speaker for example being accompanied by special brilliance activity in this ray that is very true very true blue is very required for the applicability that sumi spoke about but if you're talking about singers you're talking about writers you're talking about artists the energy comes from the sex chakra it's throat and sex okay um that is the one that makes a person creative very creative not only that when a, when the sex energy is very strong it goes out of the throat also it gets transmuted that that and the person has to sing if they know so there are certain uh, energetic techniques by the way where you can sing on your own and then there's a way to bring up the energy while singing while singing and if you scan the energy difference it is mind boggling okay now some brilliant singers they naturally do this but they don't know the science behind it and you found you you get tingles all over you know just like you get tingling with other uh, lower activities but this is tingling on a no it's energy right anyway you feel you know there are some singers they really like they say oh he touched my soul you know uh, or you know it's like uh, of course you can't touch the soul you can with energy uh, but it's like there's a sensation all over it's almost electrifying with some singers that energy is sex energy transmuted right anyway this has nothing to do with the etheric but anyway i'm just talk about them uh, the um okay um okay this 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 is this you know um into a great deal of yellow in it and the other predominantly kind of purplish blue so it says it's connected to the heart sorry i'm reading the ajna chakra that's why i was confused for a second sorry um thank you and i was on this pitch okay go ahead um 
Now the dark blue expands itself, expands, expands itself in the lower central parts of the brain. Okay, this all soon is covered. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Ordinary and I've covered. Thought. Ordinary thought is stimulated by the blue ray mingled. Okay, I'll skip this. That's it. Um, okay, you can go ahead. All right. Um, so I'd like to just um, add one thing. What, what uh, Amit mentioned is right. So the throat chakra has two correspondence. One is the correspondence with what we're going to come to in the next chakra between the eyebrows, the Agnya chakra. So that is the abstract man and the <clears throat> concrete mind. And then it also has high creativity and low creativity with the sex chakra. And so I think uh, that's why, you know, if you listen to the song sung by Lata Mageshkar, compared to her siblings or any of the others, um, you'll notice that there's a difference in her voice. Not just the youth in her voice, but also the way when she sings, how it touches uh, your core, right? Um, for those of you who heard other singers, I mean, for example, if you, uh, if you do listen to Western music and you've heard of Whitney Houston, when she sings, uh, it's almost amazing because it, it kind of takes you to a different level now, it's not just actually the energy that comes only from uh, here, it's also energy that comes from there, right? And so that's why when they sing certain songs, uh, it, it doesn't just, it, it kind of spaces you out, right? Because into the room, like he rightly said, there's a lot of violet also that they're able to bring down, a lot of divine energy also comes uh, when they sing, especially in relation to um, God or uh, in relation to love. I've noticed that. Okay, so let me move on. And so we're talking about the colors in the throat chakra. So we're more or less done with that. They just have one sentence here, which I'm not too sure about, but it says that uh, in some uh, forms of idiocy, so when, when you find idiocy. that... People, yes, when, when, when you find that people are not that very evolved, right? Um, you, they say that the yellow and the blue violet flowing to the brain is almost inhibited. I would say maybe it's reduced. <clears throat> now, why those two colors and why through this? Uh, probably because of the transit that he was talking about. The energy has to go. So maybe there's not sufficient for it to even reach the brain and help that particular person. So moving on. Now, the thought and emotion of a high spiritual type seems to depend largely upon the violet ray. Right. And I think uh, Amit already uh, touched upon that and uh, the energy that comes with it, though, when we talk about ordinary violet prana, it is actually just the prana from the surroundings. Right. Uh, but maybe the prana here they're talking about because they talk about high spiritual type may not be just ordinary violet prana. There might be other uh, violet prana that we know of that might be also coming down. Now they go on to say the awakening of the corresponding astral center gives the power of hearing on the astral plane. Now remember there is, uh, we were talking about corresponding both from the etheric level and the astral level with reference to all the chakras or the energy centers. And so here we're talking about the corresponding astral throat uh, center. When this, this develops or it's awakened, it helps you start to hear even in the astral world. So when you're in your dreams, when you go in, during your meditation out into the astral world, you are able to then hear voices, uh, messages, uh, for which you need this particular uh, chakra to be developed. The faculty which produces in the astral world, the effect similar to that which you and I uh, sense or, or hear in the physical world, which we call hearing. Whereas uh, when the etheric center is awakened or aroused, as it says, the man in his physical consciousness hears voices, right? It's not the voice of a person physically speaking. It's not through the vocal cords, but they can actually hear other voices. Now, uh, when this is awakened, we're not talking about people who are hallucinating, but others, when it's awakened, we actually call that person clairaudient. So the ability to actually hear. Now, sometimes uh, you can actually hear the thoughts of others. Sometimes you can hear sounds, even in, in chakras. And so that is basically the awakening of the throat chakra, which is connected with uh, hearing. Yes. And so that's why when we treat people who have problems with the ears, you also connect it to the throat and the jaw minor. Yeah. So these are also interconnected. And so for hearing, you need to basically have a strong, healthy throat chakra, both on the etheric level and also on the astral level. So um, the person, they say, will be able to hear music or other less pleasant sounds. So music, I presume, we're talking about the higher range in the astral uh, 
or the even the etheric level. So the kind of sounds you hear is really musical and beautiful. Whereas at the same time, you could hear sounds but of beings of lower nature and it doesn't make you feel good and, and it scares you. Um, sometimes uh, to the point that you can't even sleep because you can constantly hear them and it's disturbing because the world around you is suddenly all awake. Not just the physical world, though it's everyone sleeping. Uh, the inner world is still awake. And uh, so when fully working, it makes a man clairaudient so far as the etheric and the astral planes are concerned. And in Sanskrit, we call this particular chakra the Visuddha. Yeah? All right. <clears throat> Let's finish this so I can... Um, all right. So in some forms of idiocy, the yellow and blue violet flow from the brain come to they're obviously talking about sex energy. Uh, you see, when you just have this much information, it's not really useful in healing because you would think that the throat chakra will correlate to the uh, energy, but the throat is getting it from the sex. All right. I repeat, the throat is very important. Uh, the healthiness of the throat depends on the sex chakra. You cannot have a big throat and healthy throat if your sex chakra is not big. But like it's written in the book, you can have a big sex chakra, but not a big throat. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. okay. That's true. So people can be very uh, sexually active, but not very intelligent. But there is very, very almost zero chance of a person being extremely intelligent, very dynamic, uh, big, big throat, uh, activated throat, aroused and vivified throat without the sex becoming big because the throat healthiness is dependent on the sex uh, energy. And so right. also remember that though the energy in the sex chakra is predominantly red and we're saying that the energy that comes to the throat is yellow or violet, you've got to remember that there are these alchemical <clears throat> centers <clears throat> on the way that change that red into a different color. Yeah, it changes with the uh, spokes. Anyway, forget about that. Uh, all right, so um, like you can do an experiment if you want to validate this. You can just, uh, you don't even need to clean. You can scan someone's sex chakra uh, with permission. Uh, <laughs> okay, if you know how to scan and then you scan their throat. You don't even need to scan their throat, just scan their sex chakra. You can just touch their throat a couple of times. You know, physical contact if they allow you, you know, touch their throat one, two, three, four, or just concentrate your crown, just touch the throat like this, scan the sex. It'll get bigger. So, you know. You can do it for your own. Don't scan my sex chakra while I'm touching it. Uh, okay, so <laughs> thought and emotion of a highly spiritual type seem to largely depend upon the violet ray. So this is connecting to what I was speaking about, uh, the whole violet energy, because when they say uh, thought and emotion of a spiritual type, it could be faith. A person who has faith and conductivity has spiritual thoughts and spiritual emotions. They feel love for the teacher. They feel gratitude. They feel they're receptive to the energy. That is what I feel is a spiritual emotion. Otherwise, I don't know what other spiritual emotions there are. So when somebody wants to heal me, a highly developed teacher, I say, yes, I'm completely receptive to your energy. I'm giving them appreciation, spiritual love, and also spiritual thought. So I'm mentally, emotionally, etherically, completely receptive. And of course, we know it's largely dependent upon violet ray. So it's a hint that you require violet to be receptive or violet is produced when a person is highly uh, receptive. Okay, that's what, uh, I don't know, just came to me when I was reading it, that this is what Masicho would speak about, but when people are receptive, there's a lot of violet produced in the aura. Awakening of the corresponding astral center gives the power of hearing on the astral plane. That is to say, faculty which produces in the astral world is effect similar uh, to which physical world we call hearing. Now, when you hear hearing, you hear from all sides, right? You don't just hear like this. It's like Dolby surround. And you're going to understand uh, in the future how, um, how this works. I will talk about it after the Ajna because Ajna is also astral seeing. So I thought I'd just talk about it together at the end of both the chapters. What, if you're interested about how this astral hearing and seeing work, not very useful, but if you want, we can talk about it, okay? Um, now, uh, 
the etheric center when ar aroused the man in his physical consciousness he has voices which sometimes make all kinds of suggestions to him so it's like almost schizophrenia type of uh, situation going on here he may hear music or less pleasant sounds um look that is why that is why the throat is one of the very important chakras you heal when you're dealing with uh, for those who are pranic healers for uh, when you're dealing with auditory hallucination because when Masucho was, uh, at least when I heard him talking about auditory hallucination, he's like, they're not really hallucinating. They're actually hearing things in the inner world and they're not oriented to it. So they have no idea, you know, like even a bee's buzzing noise can sound scary. If you have no idea, it's a bee's buzzing noise, right? The, you know, the movement of the wings is producing this type of sound. So some elemental, some beings, they produce a lot of sound, especially the old ones. It's not so, it's not so pleasant. And this really affects it. That's why the throat is one of the important parts you treat when you're dealing with the throat and the ear minor, when you're dealing with auditory hallucination. That's why the throat, that's why they're talking about the, the hearing has to do with the actual center of the throat. Okay. Um, and how the throat will, okay, we can, we can look at that. All right. So I'll just quickly share uh, the rest of the presentation with you so we can finish this and hopefully, I don't know if we have time to go to the next one. Um, Okay, so it's located at the center of the throat. Uh, it has 16 petals, predominantly blue, with some green, violet, and violet. A lot of green prana is produced when a person is eating. Why do I keep mentioning that? Because this chakra not only gets energy, it has the, able to, it has the ability to transform and produce energy, especially green prana. All right? Now, part of the sex energy is transmitted by the body to higher form to be used by the throat and head chakras. Transmuted sex energy is required for the proper function of the throat chakra, the chakras in the head area. You have seen this, you will see this many times where Master is emphasizing the importance of the healthiness of a sex chakra for the healthiness of a throat chakra. You'll see it many times in the book. Um, and if you notice, the way they've given, it goes from the throat to the uh, crown. That's the way we do transmutation also. Heart, then throat, then crown. Okay. The condition of the throat chakra and secondary throat affects the degree of healthiness of the jaw minor. That's just to reiterate. Now, just to uh, summarize the throat chakra or the throat center, as they would call it in the book. Physically, it's very, very important. Why? Because it's in charge of your respiratory system. All right. Obviously, because it's in charge um, of the trachea and the, uh, the air tube. Okay. And also more. Um, it's in charge of the immune system. All right. Why? Because it's the lymphatic system. All right, and I found it very interesting that uh, we're talking about physical and etheric, okay? I found it very interesting that the throat is supposed to have these things called lymphocytes. I'm not a doctor, like I said, but what I understand is that they have this sort of memory to remember the invading microbes and all that. And the throat center, when you learn about the emotional function and mental function, it has to do with concretizing or memorizing or remembering details. It's very interesting. And uh, the immune system, not only because of the lymphatic system, uh, also because uh, along with the heart, it controls the thymus gland, all right? And also, uh, it's in charge of the spleen with the spleen chakra. So lymphatic system, spleen, and the thymus gland. <laughs> Very important center, okay? Now, digestive system, because a lot of green plants produce, you know, the saliva, all that production of saliva, everything is handled by the throat to help with the initial digestion process, as, long as, uh, as well as uh, the esophagus, okay? Uh, mentally and emotionally, how is it, how is the throat chakra, uh, throat center important? It's a center for the concrete mind, details, memory. So if your kids, you know, you're finding it difficult to study uh, geography, uh, history, remembering all these details, dates, types of soils in a particular area, you need to clean and energize and activate their throat chakra. All right. Um, it's a center of the concrete mind. Also, it gives you the ability to think clearly. You see, as a person involved, the throat center will change. All right, you have to notice the, the problem in life is that most people um, react emotionally. Okay, why am I saying thinking? Because most people, they, 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 they react emotionally. They, you say something to them or they have a problem, they start to react emotionally to the problem. You have COVID happening right now. You have some other issue happening before. You will have another issue uh, in, the, in the future. And everyone is reacting to this emotionally a lot of the times. 
you know uh, that's why you have uh, people you know what is it called hoarding all sorts of food <laughs> doing all sorts of stuff sometimes and you've seen these a couple of apocalyptic movies there you know they yeah. it's not apocalypse going on it's not like food would run up, but you know emotional uh, emotional um, reaction very few people um, since it has to do with details would start to break down the problem okay they start to so you have a problem they start to say oh my god there's this problem instead of saying what is the problem where did it come from what are the details of this problem? You know, what, 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 what is exactly the problem? Ask more questions. Okay, so this is the problem. How did you come to, how did you find that out? Is that true? You know, you're finding out details. So a person who's more evolved would start to actually react, usually with the throat and with the ajna, which will go into it. But first with the throat, because without understanding the situation carefully, how can you react and, you know, form a conclusion? Right? It's like, you know, someone hears something and you say, yeah, really? I, I don't like that guy anymore. In, then you find out it's, 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 it was lies or it was over-exaggerated. But a person who's smart would ask question, where did you get that information? What happened before that? Did any event happen before that for him to react like that? Uh, what did he say after? Did he apologize or what? You find out details and then you find the actual picture. So it gives you the ability to think very, very clearly. Okay. Um, and it has to do with lower mental. Um, it has to do with lower mental. So this is what we call lower mental and ability to think clearly. On a lower level, or on a lower level of truth, it has to do with memorizing details. On a higher level of truth, this lower mental will give you, as you evolve, as a person who does spiritual practice, as you evolve, gives you the ability to handle all sorts of problems without reacting or what, they were, what the Americans call flipping out. <laughs> okay? Um, you see things very clearly and you see the details of everything. Now, <clears throat> throat center summary for spiritual reason. Uh, it's a center for higher creativity. It's a center for materialization in the, as, in the sense that if you read that spiritual SMN book, I don't want to go into it because this is really, it'll be a long conversation. But the upper chakra, the crown, forehead, and ajna has to do with the a higher soul and the throat, the heart, um, the solar, and the lower chakra has to do with the incarnated soul. because the incarnate soul is obsessed with its thoughts. It's obsessed with uh, feeling. It's obsessed with its, uh, it reacts emotionally. Uh, uh, it uh, obsessed with eating sometimes, right? Um, if, the, if the throat is affected, the incarnate soul will be, give bad words. And uh, the, the, the sex chakra, if the incarnate soul is not in control. So most of the time, now the reason the throat, that, okay, I shouldn't have spoken about that because leave that, forget that I said that, all right? That is, too long discussion. Uh, but the throat chakra is the one that brings down the energy from higher to lower. It's a bridge. I cannot explain more than that because there are a lot of secrets to do with this chakra. All right. But um, for those of you who've done something called uh, Tibetan exercise or the five Tibetan rites, which is very good in self healing, you will realize that the first exercise brings down tremendous amount of energy. But in order to concretize that into your body, you require the assistance of a throat. You need a bridge. So that is the second one, all right, where you concretize it into your body, okay? You want to materialize anything, you need the throat, all right? Mm, anyway, now here it talks about the dark. So the same thing. Now, as you grow, um, as you become more evolved, this will go higher, okay? This will move higher. Uh, instead of the bridge going down, it will go the bridge going up. We will, we will maybe talk about it and connect it when we are talking about the Ajna Chakra. All right? Because right now, people, people react, they say whatever, they, they, they say things without, con uh, you know, without it concerning what, how the other person would feel. They, um, they react emotionally. They are violent. Not all, but there are these tendencies. Um, you know, they eat excessively. They have sex excessively. So these are the lower one. But as you evolve, you need the ajna. You need the bridge to go this way. So the bridge moves from throat to ajna. We will talk about it when we go into the ajna, which I don't think we'll be able to do today. Um, yeah, that's, that's that. Sorry, I took too long. That's okay. Um, also, interestingly, 
the throat is very important for the physical body to be healthy. If you read uh, many times, if you want to keep the physical body healthy, if you, if you notice a trend in the advanced panic killing book, we can't go into detail. Um, Master Cho will ask you to uh, clean and energize usually for older people, uh, elderly, throat, heart, solar plexus, um, navel and basic. And I would do the perineum as well. I think the agni is also there in any case. Uh, yeah, agni. But usually the most affected are the throat, um, the, the heart usually, the, the solar plexus, the basic. Um, you'll see this repeating over and over again. You'll be like, why throat? <laughs> anyway, I think that's... We, we left with about seven minutes, I'm so we'll look through your questions. I, I took, uh, uh, there's nothing on top, that's why I kept it from the Yeah, yeah, I'm just looking at, in case of Vitigo, we energize with light rice red and then gold. So then should I energize with light red and violet and then gold? Um, no, it's not required. Red, red would be okay. Red is okay. Because gold has the properties, right, of... Gold, gold is more. Red and uh, gold is good enough. Red and gold because gold is more. It's different. It's more solidified. Red, I'm talking about uh, divine. Yeah. I think he's mentioned uh, in the advanced book. Red and violet together becomes very potent. So until and unless you know what you're doing. If you get the shade wrong, use, yeah, uh, we don't use those two yeah. colors usually. If you get so the, red and gold would be safer. I cannot hear you. Ah, oh, I'm not able to call. Why do I? I hope you guys could hear me. Anyway. In thoughts and intentions, if I mix dark blue, what will be the effect? I have no idea what that question means. Yeah, because we normally don't use... No, no, in thoughts and intentions. So Correct. When, so when you think of something, you imagine it like blue. Correct. So we normally don't use any colors when we uh, create a thought, right? Um, except when you go into what we call shielding. And that is very specific. And Massachusetts doesn't allow us, I mean, since we come from the school of GMCKS, it doesn't allow us to use dark colors for them. Um, okay, Bridge. Michael Jackson, yeah, Michael Jackson also. Just be Okay, yes. <laughs> and even so much fun, that, moves through them so touch. often. Why do we feel so lonely and are depressed? Uh, moves through whom? Nana, uh, Nana moves through them. 703, what was I talking about? Why do we feel so lonely and depressed? I, I have no idea, but uh, you have to understand that if you have... Uh, Nana is the hand. Okay. Go. No, you have to go there. Oh, sure. It's not raised anymore. Anyway, so when you're... Um, you see, when a person thinks in a certain negative yeah. way, okay. Yeah, we've asked you to unmute. Uh, this is regarding the famous people you were mentioning. The what? Famous people you mentioned, Michael Jackson. Ah, I was actually going to talk about it, you know. Uh, thank you. This is to reiterate the fact that just because the ethnic centers are vivified, the person is not of high moral value and highly developed. Do you remember we were discussing this, how it is in conflict? We're only talking about the etheric part of the whole uh, aspect, okay? So, um, you know, and the, the problem is sometimes when you, um, uh, not all, all, all um, some, of the, uh, some of the people when they sing, it really activates the lower chakras a lot. <laughs> yes. Some singers. Good for nightclubs, not for... Uh, Relaxation. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so. Different chakras activate sometimes, like your solar plexus. Sometimes it's not the crown, but just your heart, right? So, there are different uh, types of music that kind of trigger uh, or the vibrations that trigger different parts of your energy now, body. Why they would feel lonely and depressed? These, these are external factors as well. And, you know, when a person thinks in a certain negative way, it causes the chakras to move in a certain negative fashion. Okay, and when a person in a chakra is moving in a certain negative fashion, it causes the person to think in a, certain, in a certain negative way. It's a vicious cycle. That's why pranic psychotherapy, if you've learned it, is very powerful because all you do is you just change the, um, you just break the cycle in a very easy way and then, um, and you, uh, you know, reset the energy 
and you delete the thought forms and you put in fresh energy and the person is able to you know heal it heal themselves emotionally and mentally very very fast okay mm, anyway um uh, whitney is autistic daughter favorite finger yeah is this to do with tinnitus tinnitus i have no idea i remember master healing that he had to use orange for that because the violet was just not enough but what has to do with tinnitus and anyway, we had scanned Zakir Hussain live concert. Uh, this is a private message. His crown chakra and spiritual cord expanded three for that. Yeah, you'll notice this many times. Yep. And and the interesting thing is while they're on stage, it's it's like that's what they call them, like a deva, right? Uh, sorry, a diva diva. And it's almost like they become uh, engulfed in that spiritual energy. And then once they come out, uh, the effect after like maybe a few days starts to wear off and then they act just like normal people. Um, Sonia, where do you get the protocol for auditory hallucination? You have to, uh, you can get it from the book, uh, Master Chokok Sri's Pranic Psychotherapy. If you've done Pranic Psychotherapy. You can just you, buy it yeah. even if you've not done it. Yeah, so if you've done healing, then you should be able to follow it. It's very simple. Uh, was my favorite class to teach in those days. Uh, yes, we have protocol for auditory hallucination and psychotherapy. Yes, okay. Tonsils, welcome. Unable to see the screen share. Uh, where does spiritual where does spiritual development affect person with thyroid problem? Now this is where you have to remember the etheric chakra, the astral chakra, and the higher chakras. They have multi functions. You have to understand how to explain it. You might be right now almost like a student listening, but at the same time you might be a businessman, a doctor, a lawyer. But at the same time, you are a mother and a father, or uh, at the same time, you're a child. At the same time, you might be a brother or a sister. At the same time, you might be a teacher also. So <laughs> you are one person having several roles. Just because you're, um, you know, the issue has happened, maybe you're, you, you want a good um, son or daughter, or maybe you want a good teacher, doesn't make you a bad son and daughter. I'm trying to find an uh, easy way to explain. So that's why when you look at a spiritual dominant person with thyroid problem, but um, so that, that is what I'm trying to tell you. Thyroid problem, by the way, the, neither the throat or the ajna should have red in it. Very, very rare you see, except for asthma or asthma or asthma, uh, where we'll use red. But generally, that is different. We're projecting red, but generally reddish energy does not go well with the throat or the ajna chakra. It's the grossest, lowest energy to do with the physical. And this is the bridge and anyway, we won't go into detail. It shouldn't have it. Uh, what happens to our chakras, physical body and other energy when we do transmutation after soul or twin hearts? Can I know more about Tibetan exercise? Uh, you the book. can. Uh, there's a book by Peter Kelder, but there are certain things not revealed in that. And what happens to our chakras, physical body, and the other energy bodies when we do transmutation after soul or twin hearts? You should be doing it before, uh, before preferably, not after. Uh, yeah, uh, if you're talking about um, the meditation becoming more intense, it should be preferably done before. Um, the sex energy is not really, but just to use a analogical view of it, lubricates the meridians for the Kulini energy to go up. And um, also, it makes the chakras bigger. So when you're, when you're meditating, if your crown is bigger, your ajna is bigger, your throat is bigger, more energy can come in when you meditate. Because in the soul meditation, you're meditating inside the crown, if you've done the meditation. And obviously, if your gate is open, it's easier to let go. If the gate is closed, it's pointless. Um, About your mother having... A the ability to hear voices. If it's not an issue for her and she's okay with it, it's fine. But if there is an issue, it's, uh, the, it's like the activating of certain faculties. And so all you can do is inhibit it. If you've done pranic healing, then you know what I'm talking about. Or you can seal the holes and cracks uh, or do a healing. Correct. It's, uh, and proper shielding. For auditory, uh, shielding is very important, those of you who know. Now, how does it transmute? Because the chakra, you notice it starts with the uh, lower spokes at the bottom and it keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher. So when the energy comes down, you know, um, the sex chakra is not there. Anyway, that's eight or what? Mabel has eight. Six. 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 So from six, it goes to eight. From eight, it goes higher and higher and higher till it goes to thousand or 960 plus 12. Um, the, the movement of the chakra is like a fan with 
two wings rotating compared to a fan with 20 wings and a fan with a thousand, it rotates much faster. So that effect transmutes it. And the body has the, uh, and don't worry about it. The body, energy is always moving in the body and energy is always being transmuted from one form of energy to another form of energy continuously. That's not in the book. Um, Someone who shouts and screams without uh, uh, without thinking. Does it mean that the throat is dirty? There are other factors. Uh, the Ajna, well. probably the agnya and the throat. Solar. Anyway, this is pranic healing. <laughs> um, but solar uh, from the solar, it goes to the throat actually. That is another important part. Uh, I don't know whether this, from the spleen. I think there's another one from the solar because the solar is the clearing house. Usually, there's a meridian from the solar also to the heart to the to the throat. So that's how when you're angry every time, uh, you know, that's why if you notice when you're very angry and you shout a lot, uh, it'll affect throat, which will eventually affect the heart. Okay. Anyway, that's why in the heart protocol, the throat is there also. There are two, two three reasons. That's one of the reasons. Um, what should I work on for stage fear? No, that's just uh, solar plexus. Uh, questions on the throat chakra. These are um, know, it's all pranic healing questions. Uh, the names, the Sanskrit names, why do they have those names? Um, I have no clue. I haven't done enough work uh, to understand, first of all, the Sanskrit language and then to have the understanding. So that uh, we really don't know why they got those names. Master just kept it very, very simple. Rahul, Vijay, it could be just your uh, uh, physical, bo etheric body, you moving the soul, mo transitioning in the astral body. If you read the book, Achieving Oneness to the Highest Soul, uh, you can hear a loud bang and your brain might connect it to a door being closed heart. That's just your transition from the, because when you sleep, you move into the astral body, which is not part of this discussion. But just as long as no one's really there in your house, just, just let, ignore and let go. You should transfer. If you have stage fear, uh, it's not just got to do with your throat. It's not really the speech that is a problem. It's the uh, solar plexus, right? So you need to work on the fear. The fear is lodged in the solar plexus. Partially, yes, the throat, agnya and the crown. Yeah? It's becoming like a pranic healing session. So let's we'll just end down. the session. How do you clean and inhibit etheric and astral chakras? Uh, if you do pranic healing, it's corresponding. So it all gets clean depending on the type of color you use. Master Chua, the, the, the founder is taking care of it to make it very easy. So we won't go into detail. Yes. All right. So I think we're done with the uh, chapter. I really thought I finished too. You really thought? <laughs> if I was doing the class, maybe. <laughs> I have more to talk about in the Ajna. Yes. So wait for a whole day, if not two days, for the whole weekend. To finish up the next chapter. Well, we finish. We finish a lot. We're almost done. Uh, you know. With, uh, in a, in a bit, chapters. we'll be finishing fifty percent of the book. So, congratulations to all of you. We finished about forty-five percent of the book. You sat through it with us, listening to us, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> making sense of it. But nevertheless, thank you so much. Uh, let's end with a prayer. Yeah. Let's close our eyes. Connect onto your palate. To the supreme being, the divine Father, divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher. Grand Master Joe Coxway, to Lord Maha Guruji Mele, thank you. To all the great ones, especially the great beings of knowledge, light and power, to all the great beings, teachers and masters of theosophy, to the angels and beings of communication, our respective Wi-Fi's, to our soul and divine self, thank you for this great opportunity to have a clearer and deeper understanding of the teachings of Grand Master Joe in relation to theosophy. Help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better divine instruments. Thank you for all the priceless teachings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With gratitude, with respect and love, we thank you. Atma Namaste, everybody. Namaste. Thank you for sitting with us. Yeah, you can get a recording. For those of you who are new, you can, you'll have to start from chapter one. Good luck to you. <laughs> Even I wouldn't want to go through that right now. So. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of uh, information. Somebody has the link. Can you just post it for everyone? Yeah, please uh, post it if you could kindly put that. And uh, we'll see you on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. in the evening. We'll continue with... Uh, the center between the eyebrows. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll have a Bye-bye. Yeah. Oops. I'll do that. You have to stop. Bye.